I had the opportunity to mix a large economic conference in DC. They invited the CEO of one of the world's largest companies to come speak, and we were in the middle of his presentation. We were closing in, he had a great point, and on his last slide, I lost his wireless love. There was no connection, couldn't get anything out of it. It was a pretty awkward moment. He was trying to talk and looking at me. And then my A2 had to run him up a handheld and he had to finish out on a handheld. From that point, he had some notes in his hand and a clicker. And so it was kind of awkward to juggle. It just really wasn't a fun moment to walk through. Afterwards, the production manager came up to me and asked, said, hey, what happened? Why did we lose it? I know we're in DC, there's RF everywhere, but, but, but what happened? I walked through my rig and I realized I had forgotten to take the single RF cable that took it from that RF unit into the distro to get signal. I tested it that morning and all I had was the lav right next to the unit, so I was able to transmit. But once we took it all the way to stage, it had no chance of going that far to something that did not have an antenna. So given that, I resolved myself to say, hey, I can fix this. I can make a checklist that thinks for me in advance. So a policy, all a policy is, is a decision you make in advance. And so checklists are like that. Like what's my policy for making sure I can sleep at night and know that uh, the show I'm on is gonna go well. So I have that for you right here is my live audio show checklist that is found in my MKC audio toolkit. You can get that at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit or at the link below. It's got 90 items in there that walk you through in a very specific order and it gives you a little bit of insight in how my brain thinks and how I make sure things are done right and done the way I like them to be. So I would hope you steal this, rob it, tweak it, do whatever you want. Uh, it's in a tool called Notion, and we're going to step through how to use it well, and then go through all 90 items and let you know why they're there and why they're helpful for me to make sure I get stuff done on show site. Again, you can get that at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. So let's jump right into the tool and start stepping through each of the categories. Notion, if you're unfamiliar with it, is a web-based tool that's kind of like Google Sheets, Google Docs, Trello and Wikipedia all rolled up together. You can take notes, you can do project management, you can do basically anything with it. And I've used it here to make a database uh, that is able to contain all of my checklist items when I'm preparing for a show. So right here, you see as the database, if you, if you scroll up, if you see my audio toolkit before, at the very top is my audio mass survival spreadsheet, and you scroll down and you'll find it right here. And so this is a link you can access and you can make a copy of it. Uh, and if you're not, if you really don't like Notion as a tool, you also can go right here and export as a PDF or as Markdown and then format it in Excel or Google Sheets and however you want to use it. But we'll take note that right here, you can use a feature called Views and this one's called All. So make sure it's on All to start. And this has everything in the checklist. Then I've made filters, just like a filter in the EQ can take out certain frequencies. A filter in a database can take out data that you don't want to see and only put in front of you the data you do want to see. So I have a filter called load-in. So when I'm on load-in, this just shows me what I really need to take care of on load-in day. And then when I'm on a show day, this only has my task buckets, and this is a tag that I've added to what's going on uh, to only show me, hey, it's just the start of another show day and a series of show days. Here's just what I need to make sure is going and, and happening when I'm starting a show day. So let's go back to all, and I'll step you through each of these tasks buckets, uh, and they are related to a phase. So this is an engineering and planning phase. Uh, and these are the tasks that are related to that. And so we can get a little bit nerdier on how I use Notion in a later video, uh, but let's walk through this checklist and see what's going on. So this task bucket first is audio plan. So I'm planning for a show. Then we move on to tools and supplies. So make sure I have the right tools in the right place before I get on a show. And then this is critical path. So making sure the right set of actions are getting done in the right order. And this is really great for load in day. Like you can't put a PA in the air before the motors are up. So this is really making sure the right dominoes are being tipped. And then I move on to console setup. So making sure my console is in good order if I didn't have time to program it beforehand or just double check after I've done some configuration. Then we move on to wireless. If I'm the A2 or A1 that's also responsible for A2, making sure my wireless is good to go. Then I need to make sure Video World is happy because you're usually getting a program feed or maybe some Zoom mix minuses or something like that. And then system verification and safety. So just making sure everything physically is good and my, and my system is good. And then tech rehearsal. So this is... I usually like to have this done before the actual tech rehearsal. So in the tech rehearsal, they're not waiting on me for stuff. So this is stuff I like to have ready. And then show day startup. So this is when I'm beginning a show 
uh, day what I like to have ready. This does not include my specific system tuning checklist that I use to make sure and verify all that, but more, more or less asks me to make sure that, hey, are, are you doing that? So this is not completely exhaustive, but there's a good bit of stuff in here. And I know 90 things feels like a huge thing that like, I can't keep track of that. Well, your brain's going to have to do it anyway, because you're probably going to have to be asked to do some of this on site. Uh, and so why not just have it in a, in a list? You just like, okay, go, go go. That is much more efficient than trying to keep track of all that in your brain and making sure it's done in the right order. So here it is. So this has been vetted on a ton of shows for me. I've really enjoyed having it. So let's step through the list. So first would be make sure you're familiar with your gear list. You're going to get this from the production company that hires you, or if you are that company, uh, make sure you know what gear is going on in the truck and what you're bringing. Be familiar with the power plan. So if there is a distro that's fanning out power to different departments, make sure and grab that because one of the first things you're going to do when you show up on the show site is get the gear of the truck and you're probably going to place your big items, then run power. So being aware of what circuits to use and, you know, not accidentally put your PA on a lighting dimmer is a good place to be. I'll show some examples of stuff here in a minute, but uh, you want to make sure you have the stage plot or the rider. So if you're working with the band, did the production company provide that with you? Did you get a hold of the band ahead of time? Make sure you know that we're going to be. It's going to give you a lot of information about microphones needed on the show, monitors, wireless versus wedges versus in-ears, uh, wired in-ears and all that. So that's a really great asset to have. Then an IO or patch sheet. So here's what that would look like for me. I use this template a lot if I'm working on an X32 or M32 it has these channel sources. So I had four channels of RF, a podium, a spare 58. Uh, this was a graduation, so it was the names mic, so people were talking at 58s. Uh, I had my auxes labeled, all my buses for grouping and other utility, utility uses, my matrix outs, my outputs. So it's all here in one spot. So when I start patching, I can print this out or give a link to it to a hand or an A2 that's helping me. So like, hey, these are the outputs I'm going to use. Just run these, label these cables and run it. So again, this is doing as much in advance. So you're not having to, while people are pushing cases around you, get swallowed up in the heat of battle. This is already done. You can hand this asset to somebody say, hey, go. You have all the information. Just make it happen. Go. Next would be the sound system report. So if I was responsible for designing the system or if I'm getting a uh, sound system that's already designed and need to implement it, I need to have the report. And so look, this looks different for different manufacturers, but I work with... Uh, stuff from Ease Focus 3 a lot, since it has a lot of manufacturers that you can design with. So this is an RCF rig I did for that graduation show, and this is show me the coverage pattern. And not only that, but the sound sources, like how many total speakers I had in this, and this was two hangs of HDL 6As and a K12 in the middle. And this showed me what to expect from where I needed uh, how many boxes were in it, the pinpoint number, the bottom angle, the trim height above the ground. So when we were fine tuning you know, the, the array on the actual motors and brought it up, I could take my disto, put it on the bottom, reference the sheet and like, hey, this needs to be about 28 and a half feet above the ground. And this was already here for me in my system report. And then RF coordination. So a, a coordination report from wireless workbench, a very a great software from sure looks like this. You can generate a port, a report. And this was another show that I did that had 24 channels of wireless. And this gave me each of the channel names and the frequency it was on. I ended up connecting my computer on site and configuring more there, but at least knew in advance what was going to work. Then moving on to the last thing in our audio plans is I like to have the console file made. So you can use whatever software, uh, depending on the console you're going to have on the show, X32 edit, M32 edit, the CL5 editor, if you're on a Yamaha CL5, and have that good to go. So if you have the luxury of time beforehand and can build it, do that. It saves you a lot of stress. And I think, well, I'm not getting paid for that time. Well, I think it's worth it for me to not have that stress to build it on site because usually it's, it's go, go, go. We need to move quick. So those are all the audio plans. We'll move on to tools and supplies. I want to make sure I got my Pelican with audio interface and measurement microphones. And so uh, <laughs> just did I pack the Pelican? If I got a fly date, bring it with me. If it's local, making sure I threw that in the Civic and I go. And then also have my backpack with my MacBook and a charger. So those are both very important to have. And so backpack Pelican I bring with me at every show. I definitely need a black Sharpie and a silver Sharpie. So black Sharpie is obvious to write on console tape anything you're labeling, then a silver Sharpie is great if you're writing on black gaff tape, it'll show up. 
Then I have my Gerber multi-tool, a knife, and a disto on my belt. So a disto is is a laser tape is another word for it. So I can take uh, measurements of distances just by you know, tapping this button and shining a laser on the wall instead of having to get out of tape. Sometimes I need the tape, but uh, the Gerber is just a handy tool, a knife, just good to have in production. All right, so now we're talking about load in now, critical path. So have all engineering assets and plans available. I like to aggregate these all in one place. And this might look like uh, for this UVA commencement show, I did this here in Obsidian. And why I did it in Obsidian and not a tool like Notion is that it works offline. So just in case I did not have internet access, I had everything here one place as far as my checklist. But I could, if I had internet on my phone, get to this Dropbox list and look at everything. But I had my IO list right here. Uh, a Dropbox link for all the engineering assets that were PDFs of the power plan and other stuff. And I had a checklist for myself right here on load in that talked about, hey, I need to gather the four HDL 6A stacks. There were stacks of six. I need to make sure I have two fly bars. I need to prep the fly bars. I need to make sure there's a safety hang, gather the subs. So I knew that what I could do on load in was make sure I had all my gear together in one spot. So I'm not ping ponging all around the arena trying to look for stuff. And then I had my flown PA deployment that had my box angles. I pulled this from my system report. It was, I'll put that in here. And so it's great to have all those assets in their separate little buckets of what they're telling you. But on show day, right before I like to aggregate that in one place. So this is where I do it. The DL32 talked about uh, IO and the RF, uh, all the stage IO. I had that all labeled here and I could print out a PDF of this and hand it to a hand and they would know exactly what's going on. So this is a, a checklist within a checklist. And then I also had my tuning roadmap for here for optimization. So I need to make sure that I had everything ready and open sound meter, my audio interface, where I place my microphone, because this was a pretty fast moving setup and show. And I wanted, really wanted to make sure I was on top of it. So I made this at a time. It might be a little bit overkill, but this is a plan I like to have available. So source and collect speakers, speaker stands, XLR, data, IEC. It's all the normal stuff. So I had all that laid out for me in that previous document I showed you, but collect everything. So make sure you have a plan, your plans available, collect everything. And then from that point on, I like to place big items. So this is get your PA in the air, your speakers on sticks, make sure your console is at front of house. So that way you have anchor points when you move on to the next one. And that's when you're gonna label and run cables. So that's why I like to have a hand do is like, hey, see that speaker over there? This cable is gonna go from this stage box, which I've already placed out of this output over there, use this path, go. So you cannot have someone run a cable until you've placed items. So that's why I place big items, label the cables on both ends, what they are, and then run it. So the run power, I have in parentheses hands because I like to have my hands do that if they are capable and available, and then also run signal after that. I do power first, then signal. Uh, just because we need, that's a bigger issue if you have no power than if you don't have signal up in, in my book. Okay, so moving on a little bit more in setup. Let's say I've got everything's up, everything's connected. This is what I'm doing in my console. Uh, I need to make sure my head amp gain is even across handhelds, lobs, podium, and playback sources. Uh, so those are consistent and I have certain gain levels that I just happen to know from working with this gear over and over again, that's going to work. So make sure that's consistent. Uh, the digital trim checked, that can bite you. So if you have your gain up at plus 20 on a Yamaha CL5 on the head amp, but then your digital trim is down neg 10, you've lost 10 dB of gain. So make sure that's checked out. I set my high pass filter 160 Hertz on every open handheld microphone and every lav. I route my lavs and handhelds and podiums and my zooms all to a group, independent groups that I shade them 10 dB because I don't like shading my master fader. I like having that zero so I can have the available full gas of the system at any point. But I shade these groups because if I gain up a lav where I'm hitting negative 18, on a CL5, I put that at Unity through PA Unity. That's usually way too loud. So where I eat my gain and kind of uh, get it less hot of a signal being sent to the PA is through shading my subgroups. And I stole that from Robert Scoville. He does that with his band subgroups. No unnecessary input delays. These just get weird. Again, if you've made your console file ahead of time, you usually aren't having to worry about this, but I at least like to look and see at a global macro setting if that's happening, because those can really hose you if something's set wrong. 
All sense post fader unless necessary to be pre. So I start everything on my console at post fader and then I move selectively what I want to pre fader if I need that for a monitor mix. But I can just boot up my main corporate console file or band console file and know in advance that it's all post until I tell it to be pre. Then make sure the nap mics are clean and taken out of the PA. So nap mics, if you don't know, are the ambient microphones out in the room picking up the room ambience. I definitely don't want those sent to the PA or else I get feedback, uh, but I often need them for the program or uh, virtual stream or records or that kind of thing, type of thing. I, I put headphones on and listen to them because they often can have buzz because they usually are gained up pretty hot uh, and have a long cable to get all the way up to them. And they have moderator or Q&A mics to full back post fader. So on corporate shows, there's sometimes Q&A from the audience. So I could take those specific microphones I'm placing in the, in the audience, send them to a full back or a monitor on the stage, but I have them post fader so I don't have to worry about meeting them. So if I just I bring them up to Unity, someone's talking, I know that, that the presenter on stage is going to be able to hear the question from the audience. I have a dialogue compressor, and these are the settings that I use. One millisecond attack, 30 millisecond release, three to one ratio, and a negative eight dB full scale threshold. So it's all one or three <laughs> is, is the numbers. Uh, I like to use there. I have the DSers for all those groups dialed in. I have a multiband processor uh, on the X32, it's the combinator, but any other golden channels or stuff I really need to make sure it sounds great and clean, I like using multiband processing on dialogue to help make sure that's all tucked in and nice, especially on Zoom, because Zoom has so much 400 or 500 hertz, uh, and so a multiband there really tucking that back is super helpful. I have my left right matrices post fader at Unity. So I use matrices or matrixes a lot on a console to divide up my PA zones. And I uh, so my left right mix never ever leaves the console without hitting a matrix first, or it rarely does. Uh, so those matrices have the left right sent to it at Unity so it can feed my mix to whatever zones I need. I have the local USB record set to my program matrix or left right or bus. Uh, I'm often using a program bus now and not a matrix anymore post fader. So I have a local USB record on my console. I need to make sure that it's getting the right source. I have a spare 58 under the stage downstage center. So if I lose RF, like I talked about earlier on the stage, I could simply reach down, pick up a 58 that's on a 50 foot cable. Let's coil it up right there, give it to the talent and they're able to talk to the house. I have my headphones up front of the house so I can monitor what I need to. I have a squawk box, a reference monitor at front of house to monitor anything. So that's usually just like a little studio speaker that lives with me uh, that I can PFL stuff or it can have comm in it so we can talk. So make sure that's there. Tunes and walking music always ready on a DCA. So I have that on the top layer of my console. I never have to go deeper and bury and look for it because you always need access to that to bump music whenever you want. So put that on a DCA. Have my talkback mic. I'm going to fix that typo. Uh, Boom, talkback mic gained up. I use the A talkback input if the console has multiple ones for the monitors or a mix minus so I can talk to a Zoom or remote presenter. Then I use the B to talk to the stream or the house if I need to do an announcement. And then I'll unlatch the talkback. I hate, <laughs> I always forget to unlatch it if it's unlatching, so there's that. Uh, that mic's ran and heard no buzz. That's a duplicate, apologize. All right. Home stretch here, all batteries charging for wireless world. So it, sometimes I'm just using alkaline, but oftentimes I have those sure rechargeable uh, batteries that can go in ULXD or Axiant. Uh, so make sure all of those are there. And that's immediately when I load in, place A2 world, get that on power and make sure those are charging. Uh, Cause if you wait until rehearsal to make sure and double check that um, you, you're host if you don't have juice. So I need to choose whips, the little antennas, or an LPDA, put it on a tall boom and point at the stage. I'm going to use as much cable as I need to get it as close to the stage as possible. Um, there's some art and science to all that, but I just need to make sure that's there. I do a frequency scan of the area with the zip code plug-in to the algorithm, so that eliminates the TV channels. I'm using wireless and workbench for that. I have wireless units on front of house network for monitoring. So if there's a data cable I can run from front of house, if I don't have a dedicated A2, or even if I do have an A2, have those wireless units on the network so I can run wireless workbench at front of house and look at my RF strength and levels, encryption, all that. It's just great to be able to monitor in the middle of the show. I power lock all my wireless, unless the talent specifically wants to be able to turn it on and off, make sure they're all power locked. I need to calculate my RF link budget. This is something I learned from Steven Pavlik and Nathan Lively. I'll move this up. It, you can 
his video, the video link right here from Nathan Lively and Steven going over it is right here. It's a 30 minute video. It's worth every minute, but you can put in the calculation. I basically taken the calculations. They talk about put it right here in my audio mass survival spreadsheet, which is also available in my audio toolkit at the link below. And you can put in your calculations and know that, Hey, given this transmit strength, the, the transmit frequency, how far is it from my antenna to my talent, uh, any polarization mismatch, and other variables, uh, if you have an a, antenna gain in the path or multi-coupler, whatever, it basically says, hey, here's your going to be RF strength. So I'll always calculate that now and figure out like, hey, that usually determines, do I need to get the antenna closer? What's my RF uh, transmit power strength? And so I always calculate that now to make sure I am on the right track. So then after I calculate it, I make sure my transmit strength dialed in on my RF microphones. And so it's usually either one milliwatt, 10, 20, or 100, depending on what unit you have. Make sure the mic offset is starting at zero dB. That can be an input pad on ULXD wireless. Have at least one backup frequency per channel. And so if I'm running Sure Wireless Workbench and I have a bunch of RF, I'll have it include and generate backup channels just in case I get hit or, you know, some random band starts playing and they have wireless in-ears start stepping on me, I have a backup frequency that I can choose. And then I sync both lobs and handhelds, even if they're doubled up. So a lot of times I'll get a Sure ULXD quad, which has four channels of wireless. I'll have four handhelds, four lobs, and I'll make sure lobs one and handheld one both have the same frequency. I just put the battery in either one that I need for that given circumstance. All right, so insert limiter on program. You're going to need a limiter to get program levels nice and hot for a stream. So on X32, that's the precision limiter. So make sure that's there. Verify audio metering is equal to video world metering. And so you're probably going to have to pass out your program mix out of your console, convert to analog at that point, and then run it in XLR to a video switcher unless you're completely digital and able to pass it on. So if you're having to convert, there's going to be a converter uh, calibration mismatch between the reference level that's in your console and the reference level that's in the video switcher. So I'll run a test tone at 1K and make sure that the metering is equal. So if I run it all the way up to zero on my console, is that zero on the debt on the video switcher? And depending on the console you're on and the video switcher they're using, uh, you could be a little hot, you could be a little bit under, and you need to take steps to make sure that is there. And so I would use the video roll gain offsets to make sure that is accounted for. And I can step through in detail in a later video how to do that, but that's what that is there for, to make sure the meters that I'm seeing where program audio is sitting is the same at Video World. All right, system verification and safety, and then the tech rehearsal. So all power speakers, input trim, LF management, input delay, pol polarity, and presets set to nominal. So it's basically every little dip switch or knob on the back of a speaker that you're using is set correctly. Uh, if this is something that's not configurable to just speak on into the speaker, then look at the power amp and do so. You need to make sure all power strips are tucked away, no danger of being kicked and turned off. You can tell I've done that from experience. I've done that five minutes before a big show. My foot hit a power strip and took front of house down. So that's why that's on the checklist. Snake connection solid. If you have an analog snake, go through and just tug a little bit on each and make sure they're all plugged in. Or if you got an ethernet cable plugged in, front of house connection solid, just do a visual scan of everything and, and make sure it's all plugged in and nothing's like halfway or about to fall out. Go to your A2 station and do the same. Make sure your speaker stands are nice and tight so your speaker doesn't fall in the middle of the show. Make sure sandbags are on your speaker stand so if someone bumps it, it's not going to fall over. And then I like to e-tape all power connections. If I'm having a daisy chain, a 25 foot power cable into another 25 foot power. I like to e-tape that so it does not come apart. Don't use gaff tape or a fire marshal will not be happy with you. All right, so now we're in tech rehearsal. You need to have wireless workbench running and monitoring the wireless. We need to be able to hear every lav microphone, hear every handheld, hear every Q&A microphone. Do a back and forth from Q&A mics and presenter so make sure that feels comfortable. So I'll ask my A2 or another talent to get up on stage and talk there need to record and listen to the program audio. And so if I'm recording that in the USB stick and then also have Video World record, have someone talk on stage, at the same time, do a clap sync. So if they, uh, there's their podium microphone up there, have them stand in front of the podium microphone, clap, and then we need to make sure audio and video sync are in order. You will oftentimes have to delay your audio because video is probably going to be a little bit late because of the processing and get there. I usually start at 100 milliseconds and it's a good start for most situations. 
I need to play a walk-up bumper or a stinger or a, a nice hot intro track and make sure my audio levels are good on program. That feels nice and hot in the room and not too hot on program. I need to make sure and get a VOG from front of house to the house. So VOG is voice of God. So if someone asks me to make an announcement, like, hey, there's a white Kia in the parking lot that has the lights on. I need to be able to do that nice and strong and it feel good in program, feel good in the house. I need to hear backstage audio so that as any... If there's like a viewing area for talent before they go on stage to make sure they have a little speaker and make sure that's working well. Have a walk-in playlist ready. So I have a couple of Spotify playlists I just have downloaded on my computer that are generic and work with a lot of shows. But if there's a specific playlist, make sure that is downloaded so I'm not relying on the internet in the middle of the show to make sure it's pulling the tracks. Communicate Q&A naming to Video World. So some of these corporate shows I do, there's Q&A microphones throughout the room and Video World has to get a robotic camera. They have to preset that snaps to that position. And so if I say, hey, Q&A one, they can trigger preset one on the robotic camera and get there. Verify our strength and handheld walked around the venue. So I need to make sure that if I have a Q&A microphone, a presenter on stage, someone walks to the back of the room with a microphone, that our strength is nice and strong everywhere. I need to be able to hear playback from everywhere. So playback machines are usually video rolls. So that in oftentimes is machine X, machine Y that are rolling videos. So those sound nice. I need to hear every speaker in the room. So this is me <laughs> literally going to every speaker, whether it's my front fills, my full back, my PA, just playing music and walking and, and just looking at the speaker and saying like, hey, there's, there's stuff coming out of the speaker. I can hear it. Because uh, sometimes people are walking through and accidentally kick the power switch or an XLR falls out because a hand didn't put in right or I didn't put it in right. So just can you hear every speaker in the room even after you already tuned the system? Make sure I'm recording to a flash drive at front of house so I have a flash drive that's empty, formatted, ready to go. Then I have the show flow pulled up and ready to go. So if we have um, an actual show flow document or a Google sheet, I have that and I'm aware of the cues that are going to happen in tech rehearsal. And this is what I do on show day. Have wireless workbench running and monitoring the wireless. I need to make sure the battery's charged overnight. So that also means at the end of the day, <laughs> make sure the batteries are charging. Uh, do I need to set a reminder to charge at lunch? Sometimes you're doing these super long shows and if you have a high transmit strength on your wireless, it's going to drain them and not be able to last a full eight or 10 hour day. I go through and rattle through every microphone, make sure I can still hear it, hear all my playbacks, hear every speaker in the room, make sure I'm getting signal to program both to my local USB and the video world. I'm recording to a flash drive at front of house, have my show flow pulled up and ready to go. And I have my Gerber, my Sharpie and my knife ready in my pocket. All right, that's it. That's all 90 items to make sure you are set up to succeed on your next show. So you don't have to use all this. Take it, steal it, tweak it. I would love to hear from you below what is missing from here. What is something that you do on every show to make sure it's going to do well? Please make sure and snag this resource at producedbynkc.com slash audio toolkit or at the link below. I will see you next time. Thanks.